I hope you have developed some intuition on how to interpret a given deterministic finite automaton. In this lecture, we will formally define what it means to be a deterministic finite automaton or a DFA. Any DFA you can come up with can be represented by this phi tuple. We will be spending next 10 minutes examining every term in this tuple in depth. Here is the formal definition of a DFA. Well, this can seem a bit overwhelming with all those symbols and abstract notation. Examples are going to help us develop intuition on abstract concepts like these. I'll be using this DFA to break down all the points mentioned in this formal definition one by one. Q is a finite set called the states. It is basically the set of all the states in the DFA. Here we have Q0, Q1, and Q2. So Q is the set with the elements Q0, Q1, and Q2. Perfect. Moving on to sigma. Sigma is the finite set called the alphabet. For this DFA, we clearly see that every state has a transition for A as well as B. A and B are the characters that we use in, in this DFA. So the alphabet sigma for this DFA is A comma B. Delta is the transition function. We're going to spend some time here. Okay, so just to discuss this notation, we have delta, which is the Cartesian product of the states and the alphabet. So that is the domain of the transition function. And the range is states. To visualize what this function does, let me draw the transition table for this DFA. Perfect. Now I'm going to evaluate the domain of the transition function, which is Q cross sigma. So Q cross sigma is the six tuples that I have there. Now I'll use these tuples as input arguments for the transition function. So delta of q0 comma a maps to q1 delta of q0 comma b maps to q2 similarly delta of q1 comma a maps to q0 delta of q1 comma b maps to q1 i'll show this from the dfa perspective as well delta of Q2 comma A maps to Q1. Delta of Q2 comma B maps to Q0. As you can see, there's plenty of notation here, but everything is pretty intuitive. Moving on, we have Q0, which belongs to the finite set of the states, is the star state. Usually, the start state is always represented by this notation as Q0. The thing is, a DFA can only have one entry point, and that is through Q0. Finally, we have the final states or the accept states. I've already mentioned that a DFA can have multiple accept states. F is the set of all of those accept states. For this example, F is the set of elements Q1 and Q2. All right, let's try to quickly draw a DFA using a formal definition. Okay, so here is the formal definition. Uh, we're going to try to construct a DFA based on this phi tuple. To start with, Q has three states. So I'm going to draw three circles and then label them Q0, Q1, and Q2. Looking at the phi tuple that I have there, I see that the start state is Q0. 
So I'm gonna draw the pointer there. Now I'm gonna switch to the transition table. Q0, when it receives the character zero from the alphabet, it's gonna loop back. If it receives character one, it'll go to Q1. Q1, when it receives zero, it goes to Q2. And then if it receives one, it's going to loop back. And finally, Q2, if it receives zero or one, it's going to go back to Q1. There we go. Finally, the final states uh, for this DFA, it's only one state, so, so I'm gonna draw a circle around Q1. That's it. All right, I hope you'll be comfortable drawing your DFA if you're given a five tuple description like this. Now let's move on to the next topic. It's the formal definition of computation. I'm going to resort to the DFA example that I've shown earlier to explain this to you. So I've written a word or a string uh, right there, 100110. I'm not really sure if that string is going to end up in the accept state, but we'll try to see uh, what's going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to write out the sequence of states the DFA will go to when it reads like each character. All right, so right there, if I have uh, one again, it's gonna loop back to Q1, and then once it gets zero, it goes to Q2. No, so I'll probably add one more zero there, okay? And bring it back uh, to the accepting state, which is Q1, perfect. So we have the sequence of states uh, you know, which satisfy all the three conditions here. So we started out with Q0, uh, we had these intermediate, you know, transitions and then ended up at the final state. So we can say that M accepts W, which is 1001100, is in the language of this DFA. This formal definition of computation allows us to define delta star. Delta star is an upgrade of delta, which is the transition function. The domain of delta star is Q cross sigma star. This makes sense, right? So we're saying delta star is gonna give us the state DFA M will be in after reading the string W. So the string W can be any string from sigma star. So delta star of Q comma W uh, will be the state DFA uh, ends up in, starting at Q and after reading the word W. If the definition of delta star is still unclear, let me explain that using this DFA example. Um, delta star of Q0, comma 100110, uh, you know, it's gonna end up at Q1. We just saw that. Uh, we'll discuss delta star more formally in the next lecture, but for now, I hope you got the intuition of what delta star is about. All right. Finally, uh, let's wrap up this lecture by discussing the concept of language of a DFA. Let us consider this DFA machine M. Uh, I'm gonna display a couple of languages here. Okay, so L1 is so-and-so, L2 is so-and-so. Uh, through visual inspection, you can see that this machine accepts all the strings from L1 and all the strings from L2. But if I ask you, what is this machine's language? Which one would you pick? I'm pretty sure you're leaning towards L1 because L1 contains all the possible strings that are accepted by the machine M, whereas L2 is missing few. So L1 is the language of the machine M. To summarize, a DFA can accept all the strings from multiple languages, but it recognizes only one language. The machine M recognizes L1. The machine M does not recognize L2.